My name is uh, Eric Hansen and I am the third generation owner of Carl Hansen & Son. I joined the company about five years ago, uh, having had a past in marketing and sales, uh, working all over the world. But there was an opportunity for me, my brother wanted to uh, get pensioned and I wanted to expand the company and for that reason we, uh, we agreed that I should take over the business and that was in year 2002. Immediately I started uh, on uh, looking into how we uh, could expand the company, how we did it best and how we made it uh, in the most economical way in order for us to uh, increase the production and make uh, the best quality out of the furniture that we produce today. We ended up with a beautiful state-of-the-art factory in, uh, in Orup, outside Odense here in Denmark, where we today employ approximately 120 people. I was born in Odense next to the factory many years ago. The factory, of course, had a certain influence on me. I have always been surrounded by furniture. Furniture designed by Hans J. Wegner and furniture that says so much to me today. Growing trees for furniture is, is quite an, a story and um, I'm happy to be here with one of our best and most beautiful stands of oak trees. Um, the story is quite old. Uh, this tree was planted or sown in 1830 and has been nursed by lots of foresters ever since. We're quite lucky to have a lot of trees that are 80, 90, 100, 120 years old. And generally, oak trees are ready to harvest when they are about 120, 130 years old. They have the right diameter, they have the right timber quality, and they're not starting to get old and weak. The way these trees has been taken care of, has been a model for the whole Danish forestry and most of northern European forestry. So basically you can say these trees have made school for the whole northern European oak growing. We have to plant trees every time we cut trees. That means we cannot just take away timber and leave the area for nothing. And of course, we are living in a country with a very nice and fertile soil. Land prices are quite high. And it is in everybody's interest to, to replant, to grow the highest quality ever possible. So I'd say sustainable forest to use in Denmark, yes, of course. It is a beech tree. It's approximately 150 years old. It has grown here. It has seen a lot of things. Now it has to make space for young trees coming up. It is a, a wonderful tree. It has got all the perfect, uh, uh, perfect parts uh, which we need. Straight, no branches, perfect. One of the main objectives is to have self-reproductive forestry. That means we'll try to have as many native species as possible. That means beech, oak, ash trees, mainly the, the broadleaf trees. And all these trees, they throw their seeds. And if we take good care of them, they start a new cycle. 
all the time. For the young trees, it is important that we get the light down now to give them the power to come up. We cut the trees, of course you get a lot of sawdust when you cut the tree, you get a stump, but the stump will be home for lots of insects and lots of diversity that wants to live in that old dead wood. An oak stump can stay here for about 30-40 years. So now the tree is down and it started raining. We are in a tempered climate in, uh, in Denmark at uh, one of the biggest forests that uh, we have here. The tree which just fell is uh, approximately 150 years old. It's, uh, it was planted around 1840 and what a history that has gone through. We have uh, estimated uh, approximately three cubic meters in the trunk, what, what we can use for, for, for furniture. And I expect we would get something like uh, 30 to 40 chairs out of that. You never know uh, what this, uh, wood, where this wood here is going in the world. Um, we have a, a, a substantial export to Japan and I wouldn't be surprised that we will find this wood here somewhere in Japan over the next couple of years. Timber that goes out of the forest is typically, typically going to a sawmill. And most Danish sawmills, they have drying kilns, that means you cut the tree into boards and after you cut the boards you have to dry the wood to keep it from decomposure, to keep it from cracking and stuff like that. We use the high quality for Karl Hansen and Son. Uh -huh. And you have uh, the back legs, you have to have a good uh, width on the, on the planks because you have to shape it out. Uh -huh. And then you have some front legs, you can go down and use smaller diameters and it's the same for the side rails and so on. There you don't go up and, and use the raw material with high diameter. The main business is furniture production, and it goes on furniture production. Most of the Karl Hansen and Son chairs, they are sold as natural beechwood, or oak, or ash. But the high quality, it goes always for Karl Hansen and Son. It is a, a unique factory in the way that uh, we combine industry and uh, craftsmanship in a very balanced way, making the furniture of the absolute best quality possible. This is the highest uh, goal we have and the most important part for us is the durability and sustainability of the product products that we produce today.
Our machinery is uh, the absolute most up-to-date that you can think of, electronically operated. And at the same time, we employ a large number of craftsmen taking care of the finishing of the furniture, making sure that everything is absolutely perfect before they leave the factory. The company has operated uh, internationally for many, many years. We uh, commenced our export uh, to Sweden uh, it, during the 1930s, and after that uh, we continued to grow also in the United States. Today we have our own organization in Japan, a place where we have worked for more than 32 years and we operate with our own distribution, own sales offices, own uh, showrooms in Tokyo. My name is William Bosen. I work for uh, Carl Hansen & Son Japan in Tokyo. We have our own showroom here in Gainmai, which is in a district called Aoyama in downtown Tokyo. Aoyama is an area where all the major design and furniture and fashion shops are. Since I was a boy, I've always been uh, tremendously interested in Japanese culture and history. Uh, so I would say that uh, I know a fairly good amount about Japanese culture. The great advantage uh, working in a Japanese culture is that it's a very uh, well-educated um, uh, people uh, put a lot of emphasis on quality and design and uh, working for Carl Hansen and Son it couldn't be a, a better solution or combination. Japanese are very detail focused and when you come here with a high-end product, you have to make sure that your, your quality is absolutely perfect. Um, quality and service is the key factors in, uh, in Japanese culture, and especially in high-end. They really, when you sell the product here, the end users, the customers, really want to know the details. Why is it uh, designed? What is it that makes it so special? What is it that makes it high quality? I believe that a warm element of Danish design fits perfectly and that's where you see the combination Danish design fits perfectly into Japanese culture. What is the warm element? The warm of the great advantage of Carl Hansson is everything is made from wood and Hans Stavigner's design, he was a master in manipulating wood into furniture. So that's why when you get this design and you get wood inside a Japanese home, you get to warm it up. That's one of the key elements.
One key element, I think, for the museum people in choosing furniture from Carl Hansen and Son was again, um, it's a concrete building. And it's a very, very beautiful uh, architectural building. And one of the key elements is concrete. The other element in there is wooden floors and some wooden panels on the concrete. So wooden furniture was a perfect combination. And I believe that within the furniture, wood furniture design range, we are absolutely at the top. Um, and that's why it's kind of natural choice uh, to use us uh, in the museum. One of the best known products that we are producing at Carl Hansen and Son is the wishbone chair. A very distinct chair which has been in production for 58 years. A very light chair considered the time it was designed. It has got, it takes all the skills of carpentry to produce a chair like this. You have a little bit of shipbuilding into the back here where you steam bend the wood. You have a, wish, a Y here in the back, which symbolizes the wishbone. That's where the name comes from. And you have the, all the solid wood in the chair that is placed exactly where it should be in order for the chair to get the optimal strength and the best look. Another important part for Wegener was the comfort, the sitting comfort. And we are here in my dining room where I often have guests and funnily enough, as soon as we sit in these chairs here, we never get up again. We never withdraw to the, to the library or anywhere uh, where the men can sit and smoke a cigar, because uh, we stay at the, at, the, at the table here because we sit very well. When Wiener made the prototypes of the wishbone chair, the seat was important for him. Paper cord was invented by the Swedes during the Second World War, and used for the big combiners that uh, harvested out in the field. We couldn't get any sisal at that time. Sisal is from the Far East and was imp impossible for us to import. So the Swedes used paper. And this is paper cord which cannot stretch. It's absolutely the same quality after third generation. And you know, it lasts for years and years. It's totally handmade, one string at a time. So to weave a chair like this takes approximately one hour for a skilled person. This chair was designed in 1950 and takes a lot of skill to make. It has a different weaving. Uh, it, it will take a skilled weaver approximately 11 hours to do it and 475 meters of string before he's finished. It is woven, can you say, an, at a single surface here on the seat, but the back is woven both in the front in the front and in the back. So a beautiful chair, which is probably one of the nicest Wiener has ever made. We are very proud of producing that for 58 years. One of the very interesting uh, things about producing Wiener furniture is that there is such a lot to take from. Wiener designed a lot of chairs and we still are able to find new chairs for our production. The CH20, or the elbow chair as it is called, is a chair that we only took up two years ago. It is designed by Wiener in 1956, but was never produced because it was too difficult for the manufacturers to produce. 
I saw it at the Wiener home in Gentofte in Copenhagen and asked Marianne Wegner if I could be allowed to take it back to the factory and try and see if I could make it. We did that and it turned out to be a wonderful chair that has a fantastic support, back support, uh, when you are sitting at your dining room table. It is extremely popular both in the United States and Japan. Another one of the very nice easy chairs made by Wiener is this one here, the CH44. This one here is made from oak, but it's also available in many different sorts of wood. Upholstered chairs by Wiener is something special. And here you have a very nice example of some of the best that Wiener ever made. The CH445, or the wing chair, as it is also called. It was produced in very few examples uh, in the early part of the 60s, and I think a little bit ahead of its time. So we took up the production again, and one of the very nice characteristics of the chair is, of course, its beautiful sitting comfort. Looking on the chair from underneath is a special, is a special treat when you talk about Wiener, because you will find that they are all upholstered, also with leather underneath. The joints on the on the on the stainless steel are all made perfectly. Wiener always said. A chair must look as well inside as it does outside. So the frame of this chair is made from solid beach. It has got absolutely perfect lines as soon as it is stripped from its uh, upholstery. And it looks actually just as beautiful without the upholstery as it does with. This is a CH07, or the shell chair, as it is also called. Here, Wiener used a totally different technique in constructing the chair. It is a laminated chair. Each part, every single part in this chair here, has been laminated. It was designed in 1963 and produced only in very, very few examples. But it was impossible to sell. It was way ahead of its time. Nobody wanted it. But finally, they got rid of the chairs, probably at a very low price. But in 1990, the uh, chairs were auctioned, some of the chairs were auctioned at Sotheby's in London. And they each were sold for 25,000 US dollars. And we felt perhaps it would be a good idea to consider to put, reproduce the model one more time. So we started the production. And I would say it has been a fantastic success. It is appealing to young people and even to more mature people. And it's so different to anything else you see. And friendly, very, very friendly and smiling chair. The company is still family owned and will continue to be family owned in many years to come.